Now, a, a story that has all the fascination of a contest between David and Goliath. Tonight, Oxford United from the third division take on first division Everton in the quarterfinals of the Milk Cup. Michael Whale is uh, at Manor Ground in Oxford and not so much soaking up pre-match atmosphere as, I suspect, freezing to death. Michael. <laughs> Well, not quite freezing to death, actually. It's a lot warmer tonight. Uh, the gates have just opened here at the manor ground, you can probably hear, but the lights aren't allowed to be on because of an agreement with local householders, so they won't be on for another half hour. And you can probably hear the crowd behind me. But uh, for the past week, I've been looking at the success of Oxford United and asking Town and Gown what they thought and how it happened. <laughs> Oxford, a city with a split personality. On the one hand, the dreaming spires that cosset a great university, a major tourist centre, and insulated from the rest of the town. Tell me, what do you think about Oxford United's run and the cup? Shall I tell you something? I've got no idea what they're doing. Sorry. <laughs> I couldn't give a damn actually. I'm very, very, very happy for them. Have you seen them at all? No, I haven't. Do you I haven't. follow football? Not at all, I'm afraid. Not at all. And away I must go, the right screen. Then there is the other Oxford. The unfashionable suburb of Headington is all about the working class and Oxford United, the local soccer team and heroes of the moment. On the verge of bankruptcy only two years ago, they're now second in the third division, in the quarter-finals of the Milk Cup and in the fourth round of the FA Cup. For their fans, this is what Oxford is about. How long have you supported Oxford? Uh, since they were Haddington United in the Southern League, when Ron Atkinson was playing here. Well, I think everybody else is really enjoying it. I think they've got sort of cup fever and everybody's talking about it now. And what about the university? They don't seem to support Oxford. Well, we don't support the university, so it's as simple as that. Ironically, though, there are links between the spires of academia and the football club. United train on the grounds of Brasenose College, or BNC, as it's known to its students. Here, two local sporting heroes prepare for Oxford's ever-growing fixture list. Steve Biggins, who came on a free transfer from Shrewsbury, and George Lawrence, a £45,000 buy from Southampton. The players sweat and strain under the demanding guidance of Ray Graydon, one-time Aston Villa player, and the real local hero, manager Jim Smith. He was hired by Oxford just a fortnight after having been sacked by First Division Birmingham City. That's OK, knock it square away. I knew that I could make Oxford Rick. successful. I knew it. I could make most clubs successful, given time and, and support and luck, of course, you need that. I mean, we've had our luck uh, this year in, in the draws we've had. I mean, uh, we've done the business when we've been drawn against Newcastle, Leeds and Manchester United. The financial effects of two cup runs and a regular 10,000 gate have been truly wondrous for the club. An inherited bank overdraft of a quarter of a million pounds has been virtually wiped out. The players, whose average wage is around £200 a week, gain too. They're on a bonus of £570 a man for the Everton game alone. Football club chairmen come in many permutations of wealth and power. Robert Maxwell is an ex-Labour Member of Parliament and a millionaire from the publishing and printing industries. He's a character full of controversy, both in his businesses and in his new pursuit, football, the names and the jargon of which don't come easily to him. But how has he sorted out the club's finances? We've introduced much tighter financial controls and on the whole I will not allow the spending of money unless I know that there's going to be some way of getting it back. And for instance, in our present run of the Mill Cup, we've increased prices, we've held auctions successfully of tickets, we've carried national advertising, 
which has brought in a very substantial sum of money for the club. And at the present time, uh, we are virtually, in, uh, we owe the bank not a penny. Now, do you make these decisions yourself, or do you hold a board meeting where they vote? I make the decisions, day-to-day -day decisions myself, in cooperation with the uh, uh, manager. But we do hold board meetings from time to time. There are no votes, virtually unprecedented, for there to be a vote. Well, I mean, Messer Maxwell's a, a wealthy man, but he's a, a very shrewd businessman. And I mean, wh when I, he's not going to throw money about like Confetti to get success. What he does give us is stability at the bank and, and stability within the club. Oxford only have a squad of 17 full-time professional players. They're a blend of men with experience, like Bobby McDonnell from Manchester City and Neil Watmore from Bolton, and players of promise like Kevin Brock, all brought together with one purpose, to score goals. I'm with me now, manager Jim Smith of Oxford United. Jim, your chances tonight? Very good, I would think. Uh, it's, uh, we'll soon know. Um, we're looking forward to it. We've got a, a, a good side to, to play against. Uh, we're a good side. It's making for a, a very interesting cup time. Bobby McDonnell, you were at Wembley twice. Now, do you think you can get to Wembley with a third division side? Well, I'd like to think so. It would be a turn up for the book, uh, considering my situation earlier on in the season. But uh, we've got a good side, as the manager said, and uh, we'll be given 100% to try and get through tonight. Mm -hmm. And of course, you said earlier in the season, you, were, you came here free, didn't you? Well, that's right. Yeah, I was snipped for the manager. But uh, I'm just happy to be here, happy to be connected with Oxford. And uh, if we can get to Wembley, that'll just be a fantastic season for me all in all. Have you had to uh, G the players up tonight? or no, Not really. Um, they, they've been in a tremendous mood all, well, all season, really, with the success they've had. But the feelings, to be honest, are the same tonight as against all the Milk Cup games we've had. Yeah. For, quietly confident, uh, right. bubbling a little bit and looking well, forward to playing best on Best of luck television. to both of you. And now back to Sally in the studio. Thanks, Mike.